Today we're gonna learn how to remove wrinkles from clothes using frequency separation. In other words, let's iron some clothes today. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and I have a question for you. Have you ever seen an ocean or a sea? It looks something like this, right? Let's take a brush. Let's draw some ocean ripples. It looks like this. You might have drawn it as a, as a child. So just like this, right? Very simple to do. Now, this is the scene of the ocean when you have no winds coming along, when you have no tsunami or something like that. But here's the thing. When you have tsunami or any natural calamity, pressure is building up, right? So let's take a new layer. Pressure is building up just like this. And at that time, the scene of the ocean is not like this. The scene of the ocean is something like this. Let's change the color to red because red is the sign of danger. The scene of the ocean is something like this, right? Excuse my drawing, by the way. <laughs> Have a look. It still has those tiny ripples. It still has those waves, but it also have an additional low frequency wave, right? Now, frequency separation is separating the high frequency waves from the low frequency waves so that you can work on them separately. Now think of it in terms of clothes. In clothes, we have those tiny fabric textures and also it does have those wrinkles which are bigger folds. Think of it like this. So if we separate the frequency, let's turn this off. If we separate the frequency, it will be something like this. Frequency number one would be this large frequency, right? And frequency number two would be, let me change the color to blue so that you can see, these small frequencies. Now, these two combine, this one and this one, these two combine to form this when you have wrinkles in your shirt. So if we make this plane, this frequency, if we make this plane, if we just play with it, if we can even out the tone, the cloth will be wrinkle free and it will still have these textures. Why? Because we'll first use frequency separation to separate both of those frequencies and work just on the folds. Make sense? Let me show you some examples. But before we jump into the examples, I want to make it clear for you once again. Have a look at this again. Here we have a large wave and small waves, high frequency waves superimposed on that large waves. Using frequency separation, we're going to separate both of them. So think of these small waves. Think of these high frequency waves as fabric textures and this large wave, this one, as those wrinkles. So you have to separate both of them and even out the wrinkles, keeping the small textures or the fine fabric textures intact using frequency separation. So here we have our first example. And if you want to download any of the photos used in the video, make sure to go ahead and check the links in the description. Let's zoom in. As you can see, his shirt is a lot wrinkly. So the first thing that we need to do, make two copies of the background layer. Here's how we do it. Press Control or Command J. Keeping the Control or Command held, press J again. This will make two copies. Or in other words, you can also just hold the Control or Command, press J twice in very quick successions and there you go. There you have done it. Now let's name the lower layer as color or whatever you want to name it. Let's name it low frequency or high frequency. It's totally upon you because that layer will take care of the color and most probably the wrinkle. The top layer will take care of the fabric texture. So you can name it any way you like. Let's name it low frequency so that it has a generalized term, low frequency and this one, the high frequency. Now, in the low frequency area, we don't want any skin texture, right? So let's select the low frequency layer. Let's turn off the high frequency and we're going to blur it, right? Go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Now, keep the value all the way to 0.1 and keep on increasing it gradually and have a look at this section or any section that you like. Just click on the section which you want to view and just increase the radius and just when just when the fabric textures go away, stop. So in this example, as you can see, fabric texture is still there. If I increase it, still there, still there. Let's go five. Five is good. And once you're satisfied, hit OK. 
Now, the next thing that you need to do, you have taken off the skin texture from this layer. You have taken off the high frequency from this layer. This has just the tone, just the wrinkle, right? You want to subtract this. You want to take this away from the high frequency, which is not right now, which is not high frequency, which is the complete layer right now. You have to take the low frequency away to make this layer just high frequency to make this layer just have the high frequencies, just have the texture. So with the high frequency layer selected, go to image and then apply image. Now inside of apply image, make sure you choose layer as low frequency because you want to subtract a low frequency from it. Let's choose low frequency. Channel RGB is fine. Blending mode, very obvious. Let's choose subtract and the value of scale as two and offset 128. Now why these values? I have a dedicated video explaining frequency separation really, really in depth with science and physics. Let's check that video out first for you to understand this. Okay. If you want to understand this, check that video out. Now, some of the professionals claim that if you're using a 16 bit image, you have to use instead of subtract, you have to use add and the value of two zero and you have to check in invert. But here's what's worked for me. If I choose subtract, I have applied subtract the value of 2128 without in word on both 16 bit images and 8 bit images. And I personally have seen no difference. And I was startled by this fact. So yesterday I went ahead and asked an awesome photographer and a Photoshop guy and a popular author. You might already know him, Matt Kloskowski. I asked him, what's the difference between using subtract and add in 16 bit and 8 bit images? He said he personally saw no difference either. So we see no difference. You can use subtract on both 16 bit and eight bit images. Okay. I have a proof at the end of the video, so you can check that out. Let's choose subtract value of scale two offset 128. Let's click. Okay. Now, once you're done with this, let's change the blend mode of this one to linear light. Again, if you want to know why the values of two and 128, check this video out again. All right. Now, as you can see, if we make a group of both of these, the high frequency and the low frequency by holding the control or command and clicking on the other one and making sure both of them are selected. And then if we press control or command G, it makes a group of both of them. Now, if I turn off this group, you can see no difference because both of these images combine to form this image. And that way we can say that both of them are perfectly separated, but both are different. If you have a look at solo layers, see this one is blurred. This one just has the details. Now what you have to do, select the low frequency layer, select the mixer brush tool. So right click on in here and choose the mixer brush tool. Think of mixer brush like this. Think of this image just like an oil painting and it's still wet. Now, if you have a brush, you can use the brush to smudge it all up, to mix it all up. And that's all there is. So take the mixture brush and the value of wet, set it to two or three or four, something like that. And copy the value 75, 90 doesn't matter. Load and mix doesn't matter right now because we are smudging it and make sure that this is clicked. This is checked off. You don't want any color here. Click on in here. You want it to be transparent and click on in here. You want it to be just just make sure that this is transparent. Okay. This one is clicked. Not this one. This one is clicked and this is checked off just like this. Wait for, you can keep the flow at around hundred. You already know the concept of flow, right? If you have the flow at 10%, you will have to paint 10 times or more to get the intensity of the brush. If the flow was hundred percent as simple as that. So let's keep the flow at 100%. I'm going to show it very quickly. You can keep the flow low and paint a couple more times to get it more smoother and have more control over it. But I'm going to keep at 100%. And then let's just try to soften it out just like this and paint in the direction of the wrinkle. Okay. You don't have to make it totally flat. You have to maintain the big folds so that it looks natural. You have to maintain the big folds like this. It doesn't mean that it's wrinkled. You have to just remove the wrinkles and paint in the direction of those big folds, just like this. And if you want to see what you're exactly doing, I'm just going to show you how it's working out. And my table is a little wobbly right now. So just a few brush strokes and have a look at what it did. If I turn off the group, so this is the before, this is the after. Now let's zoom out. This is the before, this is the after. If you want to have a look at what exactly we are doing, you can go ahead and turn off this high frequency layer and see we are just 
softening out the wrinkles. So you can also do it with this turned off and just paint and make sure it's all smoothed and evened out like that. Okay. And once you do it, you will understand which direction to paint because the direction also matters. You just cannot go ahead and paint it just like this. It will ruin the photo. If I just turn it on right now, see, it's looking very strange. You have to paint in a particular direction. And that is something which you will get only and only if you practice. So I join my hands. Please go ahead, download this photo, use your own photo, but please practice it. Okay, let's just turn this off and let's just even this out. You can take as much time as you want. Make sure you maintain the folds. You don't remove the folds, maintain the folds and just have a look. This, these are the wrinkles, we need to remove that. So let's just blur it all out. See, I'm maintaining the folds. I'm not just getting painting it this way and taking away the folds. So maintain those high folds. So you can just paint in here, just take care of all the wrinkles like that. See, this is the fold, I left it. You don't have to play with that. See, there's a fold again, leave it, fold again, okay. Now if I turn that on, I did it very quickly, you already saw that. Now if I turn this on, have a look, it's evened out. Have a look at the before and after, so this is the before, this is the after. Really, really good. And this is the after image after I worked on it for 15 minutes or so. So there we go. Now have a look at this image. This is our second example and for you to understand it very clearly. So in this too, very simple, control or command J twice, one, two. Right? You can name it, let's not name it this time. And now we'll go to image and then apply image. But before we do that, we have to blur it out, right? Let's turn this off and go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. Now let's take a sample of one of the areas of her shirt, shall we call it? Or jeans shirt because it's made of jean material. Anyway, let's go ahead and increase the radius. So as you can see, it's still not blurred yet. So let's keep it at around eight is fine. Click OK. Now, let's turn on this layer, come to this layer, select this layer and we'll go to image and then apply image. Let's subtract layer 1 from it, RGB subtract to 128, everything is fine. Make sure invert is not checked, click OK and change the blend mode of this one to linear light. Now similarly, select layer 1, make sure the mixer brush is selected and just what you can do, you can just turn it off and just soften it all out just like this, maintain the folds don't remove the folds. Let's decrease the wetness to 2%. Okay. In layman's concept, think of this brush just like that brush we talked about. This being a wet oil painting and you're painting with the brush. Wetness is how wet the brush is. The more wet the brush is, the more mixing, the more smudging will occur. Okay. So there we go. Okay. Do not remove the folds keep them intact, just remove the wrinkles, okay? This is looking great in that direction, just like this. And we have just evened out this particular area. Let's just turn this back on and let's have a look. Have a look at it. If you make a group of both of them, have a look at the before and after, let's zoom out quite a bit. So this is the before, this is the after. As you can see how much of a difference it has made. So that's how we remove wrinkles from clothes using frequency separation. Now I gotta show you something which is very, very important. Now have a look at this, this is the picture of my beautiful family. Now as you can see, this is a 16-bit image and this is for the guys who think there's a difference between subtract and add, but I personally saw no difference, but I gotta show you the proof. Okay, so. If you go to image and then mode, as you can see, this is a 16-bit image. Now, let's do frequency separation on this. If you make two copies of this, pressing Ctrl or Command J twice, turning off the top layer, going into this layer, filter, blur, and then let's apply some Gaussian blur. Let's say four-ish, click OK once you're satisfied. Now, let's come to this layer, let's turn this on, let's go to image and then apply image. And let's apply subtract to 128, everything is fine. And we choose layer one, okay? We have this, click okay. Now, I'm gonna create another subtract layer just to show you it doesn't have any difference. Remember, this is the 16-bit photo. Okay, now let's make another copy of the background layer, pressing Control or Command J, and I'm gonna bring it at the top. And this time, 
let's go to image and then apply image and let's try add so I'm going to choose layer one again it's already chosen and instead of subtract let's choose add for 16 bit images which is suggested by most professionals many professionals I have to say let's choose invert the value of two zero okay now as you can see as you can see this one was done using add and this one was done using subtract if I turn the add off no difference at all let's just zoom in no difference at all the subtract is same if I turn on the add the add is same so I personally saw no difference I tried both of them in both types of images so keeping all of that aside that's how we use frequency separation to separate the fine textures of the fabric and the texture of the wrinkles and then work on the wrinkles even it all out to get a smooth softened fine ironed cloth now here's how to do it make two copies of the background layer or the layer in which you want to work then blur out the bottom layer to the point where the textures of the fabric go away just when the texture of the fabric goes away stop hit ok in the Gaussian blur panel next turn on the second layer the high frequency layer then go to image apply image and then subtract the low frequency layer from the high frequency layer and that's how to do it then use the mixer brush and then just even it out even out the things in the low frequency which in other words are the wrinkles i hope this video helped you and if it did make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss a thing i'll see you guys in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating